Welcome back to Black Optical TV. I am your host, David Caldwell. We just had the best conversation with Terrence, the optical poet. He's with the Vision Council. He's a director and he's also on the board as well. What a great guy, uh, very insightful. Kind of gave us a little bit inside perspective of what he has been up to in the industry. Great talking with him. Josh and I from Oklahoma City. Josh, welcome. Another episode of Black Optical TV. So happy to be back with you guys. It's good having you back. Yeah. Round two. Please join us for Terrence Lachran's full interview later in the show. One of the questions that keeps coming up for our clients is how do I get service for a sale during this time period? And for us, we're so excited. We just launched a new feature on our website where you can actually schedule an appointment. You can schedule that appointment for a repair or some kind of an adjustment, or it can be for a virtual consultation. So we can do a video chat and help you pick out that perfect pair, or we can schedule an appointment for you to come in the store. And so you will have our full attention during that appointment, and we can make sure you find that perfect Hair. You can go on our website and check that out on how to use that feature. The optician tip of the day is transition lenses. Today I'm showing off my Transitions 8 Gray in my Dita Line 2 frame. When photochromatic lenses are exposed to UV light, trillions of photochromatic molecules in the lenses begin to change structure. This reaction is what causes the lenses to darken. These molecules constantly and smoothly recalibrate so the optimal amount of light reaches your eyes, whether you're in bright sunlight, under cloud cover, or indoor. There is a misconception behind transition lenses. They're definitely not the transitions of the past. They activate 30% faster and deactivate 30% faster as well. So you're looking at about 30 second activation time when in full sun and about three to three and a half minutes of deactivation time. So a great option for people who want to have one pair, one frame, and two sets of lenses basically. So you have your clear lens and then also your dark transition lens. Welcome back to Black Optical TV. We are excited to have Terrence here joining us from Connecticut, the optical poet. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey. Terrence, so How's good to have guys? you. Always a pleasure to see you guys. How's life in Oklahoma? Fantastic. Yeah, we're nice. making the best out of it um, and innovating and enjoying life. Terrence, you're well known in the industry. I, I sense that the word magnanimous comes to mind when I think about you. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you bring joy everywhere you go. Oh, um, is man. That, have you always been that way? Or give us like a little background on Terrence. Oh, man, you know what's crazy? It's, 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 it's a fact that for me, it's all about looking at positivity, right? Um, this industry, as you, of course, at Black Optical, you know, uh, this industry is cool. Uh, this industry is fun, and the products that we fit with people makes people feel good, right? So I feel like if that's our industry, and I'm with the Vision Council and Vision Expo, me and my personality should always be a reflection of this industry. Uh, I think it's also really cool because I get a chance to hang out with really cool people in this industry, and I feel like the people that I attract are also on the same wavelength. So it just gets easy to be positive and joyful with people who have the same kind of uh, values. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, think, yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now uh, with, the inter with the interviews and the, the panels that you're doing. Explain that for us. Yeah, so you know, when uh, everything happened with the quarantine, for the first week, I, like everybody else, I was kind of like, well, what do I do? <laughs> so I kind of just stayed home and got fatter. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> after about a week of getting fatter, I said, well, I can't travel. I can't see the people I usually engage with. So is there a way that I can use my time here to number one, uh, focus on some positivity in the industry and to remind people in the industry why we're doing this for us as well. So I decided to come up with something called the Eye to Eye series. So the Eye to Eye series uh, started off of just saying, let's, let's focus on immediate needs of the industry, which is how to keep business going during COVID, how to engage with your employees during COVID, how to uh, figure out uh, different methods of finances during COVID when it comes to loan process. 
uh, which is always great. But then there's this other aspect of people that I would see on social media saying they're using this time to really get into their creative juices and come out with different projects or different products. So it's like we have this business side of the industry that needs to be addressed. So we have this creative side of the industry that needs to be addressed. So I end up splitting uh, the eye to eye series into two different sessions. So Wednesday is coffee talk and that deals with a lot of uh, business aspects of the industry, of how to protect your business now. And the second one is called happy hour. And that's diving into the creative parts of this industry and really getting that part of our brain going. And going and stuff. That's great. I love that. Um, yeah. Kind of exercising both, both sides. I didn't know that was part of the vision. I love that. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, the, <laughs> that's the beauty of eyewear too, right? The eyewear industry lo- uh, lends to both where a lot of people love it for the business side, but then the creativity side is fascinating as well. Absolutely. And I think at Vision Next, but we always try to appeal to both sides of the industry. So I figured there are all these different Instagram lives and webinars going on. Um, let's see if we can all bring these topics into one house. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, great work on that. The next question. Uh, so tell us about the vibe in the city you're in right now. What's going on there? Like, what's the general vibe? Mm, what's going on here? Where are you Abs- first? Absolutely sure. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are the city. Absolutely. Absolutely nothing. I wish I could show you guys a view from my, um, uh, my patio right now. There is absolutely nothing going on. So I live on the, uh, the New York border, basically. So it's, it's crazy that you, you're in this little suburban area of Connecticut, and then you cross over into New York. And it's a completely different feel of things, right? So uh, even though we're so close to New York, we're not as affected by uh, the COVID, but because everyone that lives in this community works in New York, it's kind of been a little bit on edge with everybody as well. Um, so right now, the good thing about it is people are staying home, which is like, please stay home. Uh, businesses are closed. Um, I kind of live in an area with a lot of um, people that work in the city. So I think like them and like myself, that's never home. We're starting to like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. This is, there are actually little cool little nooks in this area that we kind of hide out in. Mm. Um, that's pretty much been the vibe here. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. How are you staying connected? You talked a little bit about uh, what you're doing with the panels. How are you personally staying connected? Doing a lot of video chat, social media, tell us. Yeah, you know, I, I do. I love doing these the Zoom meetings. Um, but one thing that I think that I lost in these past few years is the one-on-one connection with people. And, and not, um, not, not, not talking about when I visit, like, when I'm in your city, if I'm, I'm in Oklahoma, if I'm in Dallas. I'm talking about like, um, I get used to texting people, you know, hey, how's it going? And I think kind of removes that human interaction to a point. Uh, So I've been doing something that I haven't done in a while and just picking up the phone and being like, hey, you know, what's going on? How are you doing? Um, I had a great conversation with Gary a few days ago on the phone. I had a conversation this morning with Wendy Sally. And it's just able to to hear each other's voice. Uh, You can hear the feeling and the emotions and what we're saying as well. Uh, and I'm not calling them about business. I think eventually it always leads there. It's just more like, hey, how's it going? You know, uh, let's just kind of talk about what's happening in our families and our lives, what's happening in our business as well. Uh, and actually, um, I'd have to give credit to Gary Black. He actually reviewed all of my subjects for me for Coffee Talk and for Happy Hour. So Gary's like, I always run ideas past him because as you guys know, he's just really good at stuff like that. And that conversation is like, Gary, what do you think about this? Do you think the industry would like something like this? What are your thoughts on these topics? So I think uh, for me, it's just staying connected with people that way. I love to hear that. Thank you for that. Explain, Terrence, what you do for people that don't know. What is your role as director with the Vision Expo? And then how that relates to the Vision Council as well? Yeah, uh, Josh, I'm still trying to figure that out, actually. I get that. <laughs> you know, it's funny because uh, people know me, a lot of people know me, but I don't think anyone can ever explain to anyone what I actually do in this industry, um, which is okay with me. It's okay with me. Uh, basically, what happened was years ago, Vision Expo, uh, they've always been great at interacting with their exhibitors, right? So they're like, let's go ahead and have a full team that interacts with exhibitors all year long. 
what the exhibitors wanted to know is um, if we want new attendees at the show. So it came out to was how do you appeal to these new attendees? So they took a step back and they said, if we have an entire team dedicated to reaching out to our exhibitors all year, how do we create a team that reaches out to the attendees all year? So I focus on a program called the Optimum Program in Vision Expo. Um, it essentially, it's a VIP program. It's for million dollar optometric practices. It's for Vision Monday top 50 retailer senior staff. And the third group are the opticians in the group there that are um, that own uniquely curated or boutique eyewear as well. So I really focus on those three groups and those three acts of retailers. And it's constant interaction. What do you want to see at the shows? What are we missing at the shows? What would improve your experience? Or why are you not coming to the shows? What are we missing out on? Or what are you getting other places that we're not having? Uh, so constantly, it's just being able to interact with that side of the industry. And I like it because I'll interact with someone like a Black Optical, and they'll give me suggestions. And then they'll come to the show. And they're like, oh, that was my idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all like that. Yeah, exactly. So, so people give me a lot of credit. I'm not that creative. I just hang out with creative people and I implement their ideas as well. So you're a great connector. You know, that's the thing I've noticed about you is like, you know, if you want to make a connection or you, if there's some kind of something missing, Terrence is your guy. You know, he's got, a, he's got, he knows who to connect you with. So I really, I think it's so important in any industry, but especially in ours. So. Definitely yeah. see what you're doing is valuable for sure. Yeah, I've always, that's also kind of my personality is to bring people together, mm -hmm. um, to bring like-minded people together, right? Mm -hmm. and I think I do a, I think I do a pretty okay job of figuring out who would click with who or who would benefit from relationship with this person. Um, so for me, it's always been able to create these groups within the industry that are, that are inclusive of, of people like-minded and hopefully they can all grow from one another. Yeah. It's great. Thank you for all your hard work on that. That's uh, and thank you for explaining that as well. Thank you, David. I'm going to let you jump in now. Go ahead and uh, yeah, head into yeah. So questions. yeah, definitely, Terrence. You know, we when we see you, I mean, your style is just impeccable. It's so it's like it's an event itself just to come and see Terrence. What's wearing Terrence wearing? <laughs> I'm just kind of curious. When did your love of eyewear begin? I mean, aside from fashion, I mean, you have some incredible pieces of eyewear. When did your love of eyewear begin? Uh, here's an interesting point. I joined Vision Expo and I didn't have any knowledge about eyewear. Um, I had on my interview with Vision Expo, I had a pair of licensed branded frames and I had a pair of Dita Mach 1s I saw Usher wearing them years ago. And I was like, those frames are dope. I want those frames, right? So I really, I always had a love of fashion, but I saw eyewear as a lot of people who are not familiar with eyewear as an accessory, right? Um, so then myself is going into these optical shops and hearing the story behind these brands and being connected with these brands and hearing their stories. Um, just kind of just really, uh, I would say it sucked me in almost right away. And I started researching things and I would go into a brand and I would hear one thing and I would ask questions. I just ask question after question after question. And I would hear things or I would hear familiar things from another brand. And I'm like, well, this is a really cool story for this brand. And then this inquisitive spirit came to an obsession with eyewear for me. And then I already had the clothes. So I started pairing the clothes and the eyewear together. Um, of course, we all have our favorites, right, that we wear every day. Um, but depending on the mood I'm in, I can change my eyewear two, three times a day, depending on what's going on. <laughs> that's so that's pretty awesome that you have that like, wardrobe you know it's that fully stocked wardrobe i'll, I'll say also that i think what happens is is um people don't realize when we are going ahead and we are trying to uh dress ourselves you know we dress here down but if you start from here it can just change everything else that's going on from here right so, yeah, so for true. me for, for me personally, I could put on a hoodie on, like, well, I don't really feel like dressing up a bunch of stuff, but I'll put on some, put a hoodie on and I'll put on hair and pants. I'll throw on a Jacques Marie Maj frame and I'm like, okay, I look fly now. You know, from here down, I'm regular, but now everyone's going to stare here first. And this right here is a conversation starter. 
Exactly, exactly. I mean, the, your face is the first thing someone notices when you walk into the room. That which brings me to, an, to my next question. What frame are you absolutely loving right now? Is there like one frame that just is your go-to right now? One? Sure. I mean, if you can, if you can do it on, <laughs> you can do it in just one, or maybe your top three. <laughs> okay, so I, 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 I just got a, um, a Jacques Marie Maj frame uh, the other day. Um, gosh, what can I think? Oh, the Hemming. I got the Hemming the other day. Oh, nice. um, the shiny black, and I always say I wanted kind of that little black frame, but I can just, um, the optical frame that I wanted to wear. You know, women have their little black dresses. I think um, this is, I found my little black frame. Um, I think my everyday frames are, I go between two. I'm wearing the Terry Lassery Rodeo. This is the collaboration that Terry Lassery did Brood. Uh, a lot of what I wear personally is streetwear. So I think that these, this, um, these frames really lend to the streetwear look. Um, and I wear uh, also Alem, uh, Pointe de Neuf. Uh, it, it's a, uh, you guys know it, more of a champagne frame. Uh, frame as well. And um, that definitely is a conversation starter, the shape, color, uh, the light, how lightweight it is. So for metals, when I want to go to metal, I, would, I, would, I usually go to Alem. That's awesome. Yeah, that, I mean, all those are great frames. So that's pretty, that's a nice diverse group right there. So thank you for that. So I know you are, I mean, constantly surrounded by industry people. Are, are there any collaborations that you've seen or heard of that are coming out that, that you're allowed to talk about or that you're excited to, to share? Or is there something that you have heard of or seen of uh, that you want to you want to share with us today? Um, you guys are familiar with uh, Corey Shapiro, yeah? Vintage Frames out of Montreal. So uh, Corey was going to uh, actually uh, um, exhibit at Vision Expo for the first time this year. Um, he's never kind of did trade shows in the past. So he had some really amazing collaborations that we were launched. He had a frame that um, he's collaborating with um, a jeweler out of Beverly Hills, and the frame itself costs like a quarter of a million dollars. Um, he's going to have that locked away into like a mini uh, stand as well uh, in his booth. Um, so I was looking forward to, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing it itself. Um, but one panel we were going to do at Vision Expo East was a panel called Art of the Collab where I kind of sat down with some really prolific collaborators in our industry and just talked about, you know, the process of collaboration um, as well as uh, what type of uh, things are on the agenda. So I'm actually launching that into a virtual panel next week. So next week's happy hour is going to be entitled Art of the Collab. I'm sitting down with Terry Lassery. I'm sitting down with Coco and Breezy and Corey Shapiro. And we're going to talk about their collaborations and how it's really an art and what they've gone through before the collapse. So I'm really excited that, about that. Wow, that sounds really exciting as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to join on that one. Um, Coco and Breezy, you know, we had an opportunity, Josh and I had an opportunity to meet them briefly last year at Vision Expo. And, you know, they are just some cool people. I mean, they Crazy, just, right? Something just falls over you when you when you come into to their presence. So yeah, it's kind of, I love watching their story. I met them in 2015, and they were these two girls that were walking around Vision Expo West, and I, I, I thought they were models, so I stopped them, and I was like, well, I said, "You guys, your style is so dope. What do you, what do you guys do? Are you models here, or what are you doing?" And um, they were so shy. They would they would do the twin thing. They would talk at the same time or, or answer each other's sentences. You know, finish the sentences. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were like, yeah, we're just, we're in the eyewear industry. We have this brand and, you know, we can't afford a booth at Vision Expo and one day we will. Well, now fast forward to 2018, they have two booths at Vision Expo. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really cool to see their story. That's fun to watch. Where do you see the industry headed, the independent eyewear industry headed uh, right now? I mean, there's been a lot of change. Do you see something dramatic happening? in the near future? Like, what do you, what do you envision of, of the industry itself? Honestly, I envision the industry itself, when it comes to the retail side, uh, doing some things that I feel like there have been very few doing already. Um, one thing is e-commerce. I think that in the past, there's been some retailers who felt that e-commerce took out the competition out of the equation. Um, but I think you guys are a great model showing that that's not true. Uh, e-commerce can actually bring the, uh, bring the optician back into the equation even after you buy your frame online. So I think in the past there have been some people that have been leery about e-commerce. Uh, I think there's some people that didn't quite get it, but I feel like now under the circumstances that we're in, people are going to educate themselves more so. 
on the e-commerce side and uh, adopting that. Uh, one thing we have to be careful though is the way it's adopted, right? Um, we wanna make sure that these people who are gonna adopt e-commerce are still driving traffic back to their brick and mortar stores at the same time. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. It needs to be. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, last question here. Who is inspiring you right now? It can be an author, an artist, or a designer. Uh, just anyone like in your life is inspiring you at the moment. Uh, there's really like really two people out there. There's a guy in um, Florida. You guys may have heard of him, um, Edward Biner. Uh, there in Miami. You know, Ed has been in this industry for so long, and he was actually the first retailer that ever returned my phone call. I got started at Vision Expo. Um, and I love just watching Ed work because I felt like he works with so much integrity. This is a guy that owns 12 stores, right? And this is a guy that he still operates with so much integrity. And at the same time, he puts a lot of others before him. So he's thinking about his staff. Uh, he's thinking about his family. If you ever have an opportunity to meet his family, everything he does is centered around his family as well. He's not trying to sell out. Uh, he's trying to benefit his staff and his family. So I think for me, looking at someone within the industry and what they're doing. Um, I just love seeing the way Ed works as well as his values always come to fruition. Um, so for me, I just, um, that's industry wise, that's him. Outside the industry, I love Andre 3000. <laughs> <You know? laughs> nice. I love Andre 3000. I love what he stands for. I love the way he dresses. I love the way that he has, um, you know, take the stance what he believes in and he's able to express that through his artistry as well. Um, I love even when it comes down to his, uh, his poetry, some of the writings that he wrote. Uh, you look at some of the stuff he wrote about his childhood and um, you know, it's very similar to where, where a lot of us grew up as well. So I think that guy is just, he dies dope. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I've been a fan of his since, I don't know, like junior high. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. You know, so um, I've, I've seen a few interviews with him I go to Complex Con every year in LA, and um, he came out and he actually did a really cool talk um, uh, just about the humanitarian energy that we need to start expressing in our businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. I really admire that. Thank you for that. Yeah. I love those answers, Terrence. We uh, appreciate you. <laughs> Ed, we yeah, appreciate Ed you. Biner, Ed Biner, I mean, out of 3000, right? Oh, <laughs> they, couldn't be, they couldn't be more different, but I heard you say their story their integrity, both of them, they have, you know, character and they care about other people. I mean, those, that makes sense. That makes sense. To, I will tell you this. I'm not saying this kind of on black TV, but Gary Black inspires me constantly. You know, I talk to that guy. I text with Gary constantly. Um, one thing that really, really made me really look another step at Gary was last year when I saw about his unplug that he does every summer and he spends that unplugged time with his family. Like he has his three offices, but he's just like, this month is for me to recharge myself. And it's hard to do, but I did it for two weeks last year and I felt so much better coming back. So uh, shout out to Gary. I mean, I know this is, this is not set up. He actually really does inspire me, you know, watch him as well. So. Thank you. He inspires all of us actually. So yeah, yeah. There, there, there's a really nice balance between life and work uh, at Black Optical. So it is. It's a great, it's a great position to be in. Definitely. I always said, I, I come into retail, uh, you might, if I ever go into retail, I might be in Oklahoma or Dallas. So you guys yeah, might yeah. see me as a part of the Black Optical team. When I, I told him one time, I said, you should drop the, B, drop the B and his name is Lack Optical. I'll come on board. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josh, I have a bonus question for Terrence, because this <laughs> kind of goes into our future shows, but is there a female uh, in the industry that you recommend we, we interview? You know, just to get like that female perspective. There's a lot of male, uh, it's kind of a male dominated industry, but is there like, who is that female iconic figure that we should reach out to? You know, David, it's funny you said that about males dominating the industry. When I first started like putting together content, uh, my first content piece was all men. I looked back at it, I was like, wow, I can't find any women to really represent the independent side. Now when I do things, I have to, I have a hard find time finding a guy who put it there. There's so many hmm. women that are doing it in this industry. Um, number one on my list will probably always be Salima. Um, you know, she's here in New York. She has five stores in New York, two in Paris. Um, her wholesale side of the business is amazing as well. 
Um, she, to me, when I think about, I call it the independent optical kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. If I would say who's queen of the independent optical kingdom, um, to me, that would be Salima as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank so you, Jeff. Definitely, definitely. So I would recommend if you get Salima on board, uh, she would be a great person to interview. It's interesting you say that. We've gotten that answer a few times from people. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that seems everything's every arrow is pointing that way. You do a great job of highlighting some of those on your Instagram too. I've noticed Terrence. So I appreciate that too, sharing those, uh, just pushing. I, I watch you push people up all the time. And I think that's really powerful and needed in our industry. I appreciate that. And a lot of those people push, uh, push me up behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very easy to push them up on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, um, if we're going to promote someone on social media, it's not just someone successful, but it should be someone that's just, uh, just organically a good person. So yeah. it's, um, it's, it's easy to do so. Yeah, I love people. that. That's why you and Gary get along so well. It's, it's authentic. You know, you're not going to just, it's not just the surface. It's, it's who you are as a, as a person. And Absolutely. That's, uh, Absolutely. You can tell there's a connection there. Definitely. Well, Gary and I, did, we talked for three years before we met each other. So uh, it's, uh, when we met each other, we kind of already knew each other at that mm -hmm. point. So, but uh, it's big. It's big. Terrence, we want to be respectful of your time. Uh, all we got left here is just a couple rapid fire questions. And so yep. the way this works is just uh, to say the first thing that comes to your mind. And uh, we'll kind of close up on this. Anything else you want to say, David, before we run into these? Uh, no, just we really appreciate your time. And yeah, this, this should be a fun uh, little experiment that we're, we're trying out here with this rapid fire question. So. All right, so let's go. Challenging with two people on, but you got this. All right, let's do it. Okay, Terrence, here you go. Boots or sneakers? Sneakers. Minimal or bold eyewear? Bold. I already knew that answer. <laughs> yeah, bold. <laughs> hat, or, hat or scarf? Ooh, scarf. But that's a good one for me. I wear both. Scarf. Sophia Loren or Sophia Vargas? Vargas. <laughs> Vargas, yeah. Louis Vuitton or uh, Christian Louboutin? Uh, Virgil Abloh all day. Louis <laughs> Vuitton. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And last one, uh, this one is actually given to us from uh, District Vision. You don't have to answer it, but it's pretty funny. Uh, Josh? Or David? Josh, <laughs> David. How about, how about, how about, how about Javid? <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go with Javid. Or Gary, right? <laughs> or, or, Gary, Gary. or Gary, or Gary. Well, I think it's the Yen, the Yen somewhere there, I'll go with Yen. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'll take that, I'll take that. We need to show Yen some more love on this show. She's been a little oh, quiet. Yeah, yeah, she's good people, she's good people, right? Oh yeah. Terrence, we appreciate your time, man. I know you're a busy man, and what you're doing in the industry, and just who you are as a person, inspires us. And so that's why we wanted to have you on the show, and we really appreciate you taking your time. Oh, thanks for thinking about me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. So tune yeah, in, you guys. You Wednesday, 12.15, Coffee Talk. Fridays, 4.15 is happy hour. Houston's standard time. We've got a lot of things going on. So hope I'll see everybody there. Sounds good, Terrence. Right. We'll see you soon. All right. Take, All right. Care. Take care, guys. All right, All right man. Bye. Another one. No, maybe I'll text her real quick. Oh, there she is. Yes. Is that her? Ah! Hey, yeah. Uh, yeah! Guys! What's up? <laughs> I didn't realize it was the Instagram invite. Yeah, yeah. We, we want to we know exactly what you're doing right now. Well, I am just working. <laughs> Are you wearing your blue zero? I am wearing Avance. Avance, nice. The, the crew Cole, I like yeah. it. Yeah. One of my favorites. Very good, very good. Hey, we had a special was... request for you, so we thought we'd give you a phone call. Your your fans are are, are wanting more, yeah. They're yeah. they're they're wanting more of you. <laughs> <laughs> more FaceTime. More yeah, they want they want you on Black Optical TV. Okay. Well, so, let's yeah. set it up. Let me know how I can help. This is going to be on there. 
to tell your fans. <laughs> you know, yeah, and you'll get a kick out, kick out of this. Did you see uh, Alicia's, the, the team drop-in we did, where she's talking about changing her sheets? Yes. <laughs> her, her summer sheets. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye. At Black Optical, one of our core values is integrity. And for us, that means partnering with vendors that stand behind their product. We try to have personal high integrity and have that connection with each other and with our clients. But then we want to stand behind the products that we sell with service. So we're going to be there for you long after the sale. And we meet clients every day that have high integrity in their business, but also in their relationships. And we love that about our clients. And it's really what makes our relationship so strong. That's a wrap for us. Thank you for watching Black Optical TV. And now enjoy this moment of perspective. So we're open green country. A local business is working to see themselves and the community through this tough time by offering appointments in a different way. Two Works Views Dane Hawkins shows us how Black Optical is fitting customers with new frames from miles away. Every dimension is measured, then checked, and measured again. Every detail of each handmade frame is special to Black Optical employees like Barbie Birch. Each pair is very, very special to this store and to the, to the client that's purchasing the frame. Because as she looks at each pair for a client, she sees herself. You know, I've worn glasses since I've been eight years old. So it was always a struggle um, years ago to find something that I really, really enjoyed. Which is why it's her passion to keep their experience positive. Once I can get them into a pair of glasses that they love and a lens that they love, um, it just makes me feel really good and I know I've done my job. Even while talking to customers virtually because of COVID-19. And it's really cool. We hadn't done virtual appointments before. We just started doing that. Also new, free curbside glasses repair for anyone who drives by. I'll go out, get their frames, adjust them, bring them back out, see how they fit. It's a lot of fun, actually. Because as they focus on staying open, they'll keep looking for ways to be there for Tulsa. The community's always been here for us, so we want to make sure we're there for the community when times are tough. Dane Hawkins, two works for you. The store is also offering prescription and non-prescription lenses that protect you against blue light as you spend a lot more time on your computer working from home. The link to set up a curbside or virtual appointment is on our website for you.